friends, my name is Tina, also known as Resell Royalty 74 on Poshmark, Macari, eBay, Etsy, and I used to sell on the Red Up as well. And that is the topic of this discussion today. My official breakup with Thread Up. Boy, is it a doozy. So grab your coffee or your drink, your wine, you might need a glass of wine, whatever it is. If you're new here, welcome. I'd love if you would subscribe and hit the like button if you like what you see today. Uh, it's going to be a little bit negative, sorry in advance, but it's just my experience uh, with ThreadUp. And um, I discuss all kinds of reseller content on this channel. I do hauls, unboxings. I have a lot of new stuff coming up soon that you probably won't want to miss. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. Okay, onward, let's talk everything thread up. So recently, okay, let, let me let me go backwards first. Let me discuss my prior relationship with thread up. I just started sending in reseller boxes, clean out kits is what they call them um, in October. I just was new to this starting. I said, hmm, I would love to have another platform that I could use to resell some of my items on that uh, don't sell as well on other platforms. I know y'all know what I mean. There are some brands that if you sell it on ThreadUp, there's a big following there. For instance, Eddie Bauer. If I send an Eddie Bauer, it sells within two days of listing on their website. I mean, it's just, I don't know what it is. There are certain brands that really sell for a higher amount on ThreadUp. So I would specifically source items I was only going to send in to ThreadUp because I knew they would sell well and churn off a good profit. Um, and there are brands that sell better on Poshmark and Macari and eBay. I mean, we could go on and on about that. But um, so I've been doing that. I've sent in nine or 10, 11 kits so far. Uh, I started in October, November 9th. They sent out the notorious price change email to all people that have been sending in kits. I never did actually get one of those emails, but I saw and heard and read the email that other people had posted online on several different social media platforms. So I know what it said, that they were changing their pricing structure. And basically, if you raise the price of your item 50% or higher than what ThreadUp had determined was the correct price, then you would have to pay a $5.99 return fee for each item that you raised above that 50% mark. So that's a lot of money per item, $6. When, if you think about it, most of the things we're sending in, we're paying a low amount or thrifting for maybe two, $3 at most. So I did do some retail arbitrage for brands I knew would sell over a couple hundred dollars on there. Um, I probably spent 15 bucks on those items, but yeah, $6 is a lot when you don't have even quite that much into the actual product. So um, a lot of people were mad, a lot. <laughs> people were furious. They were, you know, posting everywhere. Oh my gosh, I'm so down with up. A lot of people, their resellers, said, I'm pulling my claims as soon as I can. I'm reclaiming, 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 and I'm done sending in. Uh, me, I was just starting out on there. I had no idea how that was going to affect me. I'd never even priced a normal kit yet. So I didn't know what that meant. Um, my first couple kits went through and I was able to set the price. This is after November 9th when they finally processed it because it was taking weeks to process a box, even with expedited processing. Um, and I was able to set it as high as I wanted to. They have a max amount that you can set something at. And I was able to do that with no 599 fee warning popping up or anything. So I said, okay, well, this isn't so bad. I, I can do this. Uh, sent those in my last three kits in, no, in uh, no, not November, uh, December. Uh, when those kits arrived, they made it so that you can only send in two kits per month, which actually is fine with me. I Two kits, 30 items in a kit or so is fine for me. I don't need to be sending in any more than that. That works just great. Um, so the last two kits in December, I went to set the price and surprise, that $5.99 warning popped up all of a sudden. Uh, and the warning said, if you go above this price, you're going to have to um, pay $5.99 to get it back if it doesn't sell. So that freaked me kind of out. I have like 30 items there. Um, so a lot of my items I set right at above the, the set price that ThreadUp has, I put all the way up to the like 49% mark. And what that left me with was many of my items, I was gonna make a dollar Banana Republic, I would make $3 as the highest that they would allow me to set it at without 
them charge me the $5.99 to get it back if it doesn't sell. It's kind of like being in Vegas gambling, okay? So you're like, will it sell or won't it? And if it doesn't, I have to pay $5.99 to get it back. And we have 30 items in a box that adds up to a lot of money. So I that, that one initial box, I did set, you know, according to their pricing guidelines. And I did sell several things out of that box, that kit. Um, but I didn't make much money. I really didn't make much. Now, here's the thing about ThreadUp. When I sent these kits in and I do make sales, I don't cash out. I leave them there as credit because I buy the rescue boxes on ThreadUp. I think they're a great value. So um, I use that as credit towards my next box. It's less I have to pay out of pocket. All good, right? Not really. <laughs> so um, I reclaimed one box already, the items that didn't sell. When it gets down to the, you have a 60 day limit or 90 day limit, depending on the brand, they determine it somehow. Uh, when it gets down to seven days, you have to claim your item or they just expires and they keep the item. Uh, most of my items, I don't know, my itching, um, I did reclaim. One item in particular was a pair of, this is what calls a breakup, a pair of sanctuary jeans, brand new with tags, retail for $89.99, um, cute animal print, like giraffe animal print jeans, really neat cropped high, high rise jeans. Um, and I sourced at Nordstrom Rack and I picked, that was one of the items I picked up on the clearance section. Um, I know I paid under $15 for them, but still I paid up for that item because I knew it would sell well on ThreadUp. When that kit was processed, and if you've ever sold on ThreadUp, you know about the whole process system. Your item is photographed and everything, which is great. Um, it goes through like a 12 hour period that people can bid on the item. And then after that, if nobody's bid and purchased it like auction or whatever, I don't really understand the bid thing. Um, then they place it, they list it online so that people can purchase it. So when that entire kit went live online after the bidding process, I saw the picture of the jeans and everything. Um, that one item, the sanctuary jeans said not available on the listing. They were not live and they were not on the website. I thought, well, that's weird. Why are they not available when everything else is? I said, well, maybe they just haven't gotten to it yet. The other items are on. I'll wait for that one to show up. Um, several days later, still said unavailable. I'm like, okay, what's going on? Then all of a sudden it miraculously pops up available. Okay, cool. I don't have to contact them. Hmm. Now I know what unavailable meant. It means, oops, we lost your item. So this is what happened. Dear Threda, this is my dear John letter to you. Our relationship is gonna to have to change. I can no longer keep this reseller relationship with you based on my experience. And the experience is this. I went to reclaim that one pair of jeans, the sanctuary jeans. I had to reclaim the first items. And then I went back because it had listed later because it was unavailable. I went back to reclaim that one item the next couple days later when it was in the seven day time frame. The day after I click and say reclaim, I get an email stating from, from the support team at ThreadUp stating, so sorry to tell you, we have lost your item. We can no longer locate it, the sanctuary jeans, right? The giraffe jeans. Um, however, we're gonna be generous to you I'm paraphrasing, but this is the, the effect of the email. We're gonna be generous and we are gonna go ahead and give you that $4.72, which is what you would have made if the item sold. Excuse me, what? What planet am I on right now? Not today, honey, not today, Satan, okay? It's not happening, I was furious. Woo, I even took a few days to even make this video because I was, you mean, what do you mean you lost my item? That's number one. Number two, what do you mean $4.72? These pants are new with tag and they retail for $89.99. I don't think so, no. So I emailed back because as you all know about me, I'm a big believer that you go to the source. When you have a problem, you don't badmouth people until you've tried to find a solution with the company or the person. So it's immediately, I write up an email and I said, Thank you for the notification. I understand, showing empathy, okay? I understand that things can be lost. We, as resellers, we've lost items once or twice, right? I mean, it can happen. Um, however, your pricing is incorrect. 
with the $4.72 that you said that I would have earned if it would have sold. I took a screenshot of my account with the pants, clearly listed at 52, I think 52.92 or something like that. I'm going to share my screen with you and show you soon. This is the, the listing price, $52, which would have given me a payout of between $18, 19, almost $20, somewhere in between there. It no longer shows the payout. I've learned now when I reclaim items, I'm gonna take a screenshot of everything before I reclaim it. So I can clearly see the, the payout for it. So I should have received $18, between 18 and $20. I also screenshotted a similar item that was around that price range and what the payout was for that, which was actually $50 and it was $18.92 or something. So it was probably closer to $19 or $20 I would have gotten as a payout for the jeans. Now, I originally had that price set higher than $52, but I lowered it once the kit hits about 30 days, I lower the price little by little because I actually want the items to sell. I don't want them back, <laughs> okay? So I'm like, if I lower a little bit more, a little bit more, maybe someone will see the, the price change and they'll buy it. Um, so I had lowered it at the very end before it was reclaimed status down to $52 and 82 cents or what have you. Um, it was originally priced higher than that, uh, but that was fine. So you are incorrect. I am attaching the two screenshots of those jeans in my kit so you can see what they were priced at. Um, please advise. Short and sweet, completely understanding, it happened. Am I happy to take 18 to $20 for a pair of $89 jeans that I could make $40 off of selling myself online? No, but it is what it is. It's par for the game. It goes with the reselling business. No big deal. I just want you to pay me what I would have received if they sold at the lowest amount that I had set for my item. It is what it is. Write it off. No big deal. I get a very snarky, snotty email back from that same person. I'll say the name from Thread Up Support. And she says, in essence, again, paraphrasing, she says, we're gonna give you a one-time exception. We're gonna make a one-time accommodation for you today because we lost your item. We're gonna give you $12 and I think 32 cents, um, which is what it would have sold out at if we had placed it on our listing at the highest, the max amount would have been $44.99. So you would have made $12. So we're gonna go ahead and you're welcome. We're gonna give you $12 and there you go. Again, this is a one, she went on and on. This is a one-time accommodation. We're being nice, generous doing this to you. Take your money. It's already been credited to your account. Figure out if you need to cash out or whatever. So I was very upset about that because I just sent you a screenshot showing you what my item was listed at. That clearly is not the max amount. I went back and forth with her about return assurance that we pay the 1099 return assurance. She said, that's not to actually get your items when they reclaim. She says, you're misreading it. She tells me, she's very rude. She goes, that is to get your items back that we don't accept. That guarantees you'll get those items back. So you're telling me every time I sit in a kit, I've sent coach bags, Kate Spade bags, everything. It's very high end items. And you're telling me every time I do that, if they don't sell and I reclaim them, I'm not guaranteed to get it back. Hello. Does that make any sense? No, absolutely not. At this point, she was being very rude. I was finished with the discussion with her and I said, please give me the contact information to speak to somebody in management. I would like to discuss this with management. This is not okay. That is not the amount that I had this, the pants set at. I'm not okay with this. Um, she, I had to email her two more times. She kept going back and forth. You're lucky it's a one-time accommodation. We won't do it again, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's horrible. I said, again, the contact information for management. That is the person I want to discuss this with further. Thank you. That's it. I also reached out via Twitter, which the support people there have always been very kind. Um, you can give them your kit number. They'll look into an issue for you. Um, and they said, since it's already started, the claim or whatever has already started with the email company that uh, the email support team had to finish it. So they couldn't get involved. However, the person finally emailed me back and said, uh, we forwarded this to the the management team or whatever. Um, it, it'll take about 48 hours for them to get back to you because of the weekend. This was like Friday, I think, Thursday, Friday. Um, and today is Monday. So it said it'll take two days because it's the weekend, but they will, you'll hear from somebody. And I just didn't respond back. So here it is Monday. It's 5.25 p.m. 
um, Monday the 25th, and I have not had any response so far. I did check my email before I recorded this. I have not heard from anybody in management, and that's that. Now, what do I, what are my best expectations when I finally hear from management? What do I hope will happen? I can only hope that they'll say, hey, here's the full 18 or 19, whatever it is, dollars that you would have received if it would have sold at the price you had it set at. Uh, our mistake, whatever, sorry about that, blah, blah, blah. Is that good enough for me to stop my threat at breakup? No. For these reasons, I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, they lose our items. <laughs> That's not good. I don't want to have to worry about, and I'm worried right now about all the items I've already sent in. When If I need to go and reclaim those items, how many am I going to give back? I have a kit right now that I sent in a couple weeks ago that they just processed. It was a regular kit, not the expedited processing. No, this is one from October, actually. They just started processing it. What am I thinking? Um, they just processed it. Four items of that kit, same thing unavailable for four days. I just checked after I sent a message about it to somebody on Twitter and all of a sudden they're live and on the website. For four days, those items out of the kit were photographed and just sitting there unavailable, unavailable. That's bizarre to me. So now I'm worried that those items also will be lost. They're not really high-end items, but still they're items that I paid for and I should get back because that's what you tell me will happen. Um, so yeah, I have to now worry about every item I send in. Will I get it from a reclaim? Will it show up or will it mysteriously go missing, getting lost? You see my expression? I'm not buying it. So that's a concern because when this first happened, I was furious and I posted a, a something real quick on Instagram, which if you're not, follow me on Instagram, make sure my listing's below, Resale Royalty 74, follow me. I'd love to have you on there and, and we can chit chat whenever you want. But when I posted about this, several people sent me DMs, posted on comments on my post saying, this happened to me too. I've been sending thread up stuff. I lost Eileen Fisher. I lost, you know, higher end items that they never could find. And everybody's saying mysteriously lost. That's weird, you know? Um, and we're all talking, we're having this discussion. Like I said, all night long, I'm getting private DMs about it and people saying, I went through this too. And this is what happened. They just said, make sure you keep emailing until you get your money back. It's ridiculous. But I share this because of this one reason, not to bash any one particular company, but just because like I say on my channel, Real Talk with Resale Royalty, I always keep it real. I'm going to give you all the information. What you do with it is on you. But I am not telling you never send anything to thread up. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying my experience was horrible. And I've heard from other people they've experienced the same thing. There's something very fishy going on to make me decide that I'm done sending in items as a reseller. Um, and that's why I share my information so that you can, you know, take the information, do what you want with it. You know, but I just want to put it out there because we all have to share experiences like this so we know what we're dealing with. Um, sharing is definitely caring in, in the reseller community and everybody in this community is awesome. They're really supportive. So um, anyway, that's the first thing is I have to worry whenever I send a box in, will I see the item again if it doesn't sell? Number two, reason why I'm officially breaking up with ThreadUp. One-time exception, really? You're making a, again, one-time exception for you this one time that we're going to increase it to $12 instead of $4. Um, so you're saying with the rest of all my kits that I'll try to reclaim over time um, that you're not going to make the exception if you lose my item, that you're just going to throw me a couple bucks. Here you go. Well, for these high-end items, no. So that's a problem because it would be one thing if they said, hey, we'll pay you out the full value of the item. We lost it. It's our bad. We messed up. Don't worry about it. That's They're not taking responsibility for what they've done. So I have to now say the next time they lose an item, uh, I'll be lucky if I get a couple bucks because they already said it's a one-time exception. That doesn't sit well with me. Okay. Um, and, you know, just the third reason really is think about it like this. If you're reselling to thread up, you're selling your items for resale on their platform. They are making money, right? Off of the items that they sell of yours. It's a business, it's profit. That's why they do it. They make money from it. It's not just out of the generosity of their heart to help you, you know? So 
would you continue a business partnership with somebody that you knew was being dishonest, had bad practices, unfair? Would you, would you feel safe to con continue your business partnership with that business? My answer is no. I, no thanks, I'm good. I don't need to partner with anybody in that way that is gonna be dishonest and not accountable when things go wrong. That's my decision. That's why I'm breaking up with ThreadUp. However, we can still be friends. ThreadUp, this isn't working out, but we can be friends. What do I mean by that? It means I'm still gonna buy the rescue boxes. I love the rescue boxes, the mystery boxes. I think they're a great value for now anyway, for what you pay, you can get some great items in there and I will continue to do that. I will just stop the reselling into things. That's gonna stop no more boxes are gonna be sent in. Um, I'm no longer gonna source with that up. Um, I'm like other people. I try to still find a way with the price change to make money, still find a way to send items in and still have that working for me while I'm working on my other platforms myself. But to me, the, the just dishonest and nasty uh, responses um, are not worth it. I have to worry about all my items now that I have Stuart Weitzman shoes I just sent in, a whole bunch of high-end couture items that I sent in. Now I have to worry that they're going to try to pay me out $4 for these items when they lose them. So where are these items going? How are there so many lost items that other people are sharing about too? Where are they? I mean, shouldn't ThreadUp be investigating that, looking into that? I know they have to use some type of barcode system to scan everything like for an inventory. I think about how huge they are compared to us, the little middleman. Um, what's happening? Are they going to goodie boxes? Are they going in rescue boxes? Hey, maybe I'll get my jeans back in a rescue box. I don't know. I really do not know. Um, but I know enough to know that this is not a good business venture for me because they wouldn't just own up and say, hey, big mistake, sorry, here's the payout for it. You know, especially after I sent the attachment. So I'm gonna show you real quick, I'm gonna share my screen with you and show you um, the actual item that I'm talking about. Here we go, okay. So sanctuary denim jeans right here. And it says, you know, zero because I reclaimed them on 122. You can see that's a couple of days after the other items that I reclaimed. Here it is. Okay, original price, $89. New with tags, like it says there, size 29, it's a good size. Again, something I could have resold. Um, $52.99, right on their website. That is the listing price. Why is this an issue that they're trying to tell me that the max they would have accepted was $44? That's not true. You accept the $52.99. Actually, it was higher than that at one point. So why is this an issue? So yeah, that's the, the notorious giraffe genes <laughs> that we are fighting over um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I do hope to hear back from management. I hope that they will rectify the situation. I do hope that I don't deal with more lost items in the future, but for now, that's my decision is that I'm just going to refrain from sending out any more boxes. I just sent out a box the morning that this happened, <laughs> no lie. So now I get to go through this all over again. And like I said, there's Stuart Weitzman. She's a lot of higher end brands. I specifically sourced for ThreadUp. And so I'm just gonna try to set them at the lowest amount that I'm willing to take for the items and hope that they sell so that I don't have to even go through the recruiting process. But that's my experience. Have you ever sent items into ThreadUp? What has your experience been? Have, has ThreadUp ever lost any of your items? Please comment below. I'd love to hear your feedback. People on Instagram have been amazing sharing their situations and that's really helped me because I'll tell you, this is the first kit that they've lost something in. I've only received a couple back so far, but this is the first one. I could have thought, you know, this is just a fluke. It just sucks that it happened to me, but it was a fluke, whatever. It probably doesn't happen very often. But then to hear so many people say, Oh, that happened to me too. They've lost this item, that item, that I, you know, that's, that's concerning. That's weird. Where are these items going? So anyway, that's it. Um, I had a, a crazy last four days. I will tell you that <laughs> I really did. Um, just a quick little recap on the last few days. Um, what a doozy. I had my first 
open claim for return item ever. I've only been selling for six months, but um, it's the first time that's happened to me. And it was 100% my fault. I put in the listing, I put the wrong size. I did show the label on the photograph, but I didn't put the right size. And that woman had every right to want to return it. She was very kind, very generous about it. I made my comment and I, on the claim and I said, please refund immediately. This is 100% my mistake. Um, so very sorry for wasting your time, you know? Um, and uh, I felt horrible about it that I somehow it was a typo. I'd hit the wrong button and there you go. So that's all it takes. But she was very kind. Um, I'm waiting for the item to be returned to me at this time. And then I'll just post it again. But um, so that sucked getting my first return. I just thought, oh, how did I mess that up? Notice how I took responsibility and said, that was my mistake. Please give her the refund. Let's not hold this up anymore as we have to. Like, I knew I messed up. So I said, it was my mistake. So it's kind of easy to do, to be accountable. Other weird things that happened this week, we all get lowball offers, right? We all know about that, it happens to everybody. I get them once in a while. For some reason, the last four or five days, I've had many on all my platforms, which is bizarre, so bizarre. I've had several like people saying, I want a couple of these items. I'll pay you $8 for them, which doesn't even cover after Poshmark takes out their feeds. It doesn't even cover what I paid for the items. <laughs> um, no. So now what did I do? I sent a counter offer. I never, ever decline an offer. I always send a counter offer and the person ghosted right away because they weren't really interested in paying more than that. And that's fine. That's okay. It's not for her to buy. I always say there's a, the right buyer for each item and she wasn't the right person to purchase it. Um, another weird thing that happened, so bizarre. Let me tell you, the reason I know hell is freezing over is because I live in the southernmost area of Arizona. We're right by the Mexico border. And we are getting a snowstorm tomorrow. We don't get a lot of snow in Arizona, especially where I live. So uh, I'm like, wow, am I going to see pigs fly soon? I think so. I think this could happen. It's just been a weird week overall, really. So I do sell Disney parks items, authentic items from the Disney parks, Disneyland, Disney World. Y'all know I'm a huge Disney fanatic. Um, so if I'm near the parks, I'll pick up items if I can get like a good deal, like a BOGO or something. That way I can make, have some room for profit to sell. Uh, these are, especially if they're like high demand, but low supply items that you can mark up. That's even better, especially like limited release items, you know, all that stuff. So I'll pick it up. Well, I had a woman contact me in December and said, hey, I really want, you know, a few of those Disney parks items. Uh, and she gave me this long song and dance. I know y'all heard this before. I'm waiting for my unemployment check or stimulus or one or the other. Uh, I haven't received it. I don't know what's taking them so long, blah, blah, blah. I'm really sorry to hear that. I answered back. I'm so sorry to hear about that. That really sucks, I'm sure. And, and I genuinely mean that. I mean, if you're counting on that money to come in, my heart goes out to you. Um, but then it's, um, well, what kind of deal can you give me? So I said at this time, and this was the end of December, I have a two for 20 deal, you know, anything with a star or whatever was two items for $20. She says, well, I can't get it now, but maybe later. I said, okay. So I would send her an offer, declined. Every time I sent her an offer, she declined on her bundle that she put together. I'm like, do you want an offer? What's happening? Okay, done. So just a few days ago, that same person, <laughs> goes back and creates a bundle with one of those items again, the Disney parks item. And I said, and she tells me the whole song and dance again on repeat. You haven't received my check, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, sorry to hear that. And it all started coming back to me. I remember having a conversation with this person about this. Um, and then she says, you know, um, oh, so I sent her an offer, a very good offer on the item that I know I could have made more on. And she declines it. She does this all the time. She'll decline, decline, decline. And then she sends me another message in the bundle and says, um, are you still doing that two for 20 sale? No, like I told you before, that expired December 31st. It was just the last three days end of year sale that has expired. Um, so then she just didn't buy the item and then went on to like other items. And I just finally stopped communicating. I'm like, if she wants something and sends me an offer, I'll see if I want to take the offer, but that's, that's going to be it. I'm not putting any more of my time. This woman works two jobs. I'm tired, okay? I don't have time to sit and go back and forth with you. It doesn't really look like you're gonna buy anything. So when you're ready, let me know. I'm willing to make offers, what have you. I just, I didn't say that to her, but that's what I'm thinking. So I just stepped away from it, fine. 
other weird thing that happened. <laughs> There's more. The other day I wake up and see a comment on one of my items. It's a um, beautiful kimono. I believe it's spiritual gangster or something like that. It's a nice kimono. And she says, where did you get this item from? I want to know where you bought it. Huh? What do you mean you want to know where I bought it? I have, that's a new one. I have never heard that one before. In this last four days, I've had people ask me to take pictures of myself wearing the items. I don't wear a size small, can't happen, sorry. Um, asked to see certain angles of the item. Would I go take another picture and add it? Which I did, and they never even responded back or bought it. I mean, you name it, it's happened, okay? I have yet to be asked where I wanna know where you're buying this item at. Why? It can be bought anywhere. And I answer truthfully, because it's 100% real. I have no idea. I source at lots of different stores, lots of places online. I don't know where I bought it. Do you want it or not? Okay, that's where I'm at with it. I'm just like, what? <laughs> Who goes and makes a comment and says, where did you buy this? I thought maybe, you know, maybe benefit of the doubt. I believe in benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's another reseller and they want to be able to buy it in their own size or something, you know, or they want to be able to purchase some that they could sell online too. I would be fine with that. So I go look on the person's website because it was such a bizarre comment. And uh, they were just a person that, you know, clearly has had an account for a while, but just purchases items. So I just couldn't for the life of me figure out like, why do you need to know where I'm buying this? It shows the tag, new tag item, everything's there. That's weird. So anyway, that was my week. Snowstorm hits tomorrow. <laughs> Um, the good I can take from this is that I don't have to feel bitter from thread up. They're their own business. They can do whatever they want to do. I don't own them. They can do what they want. But what I do have power over is me as the reseller. And I can also do what I want. And I can make the choice to not send them my items to profit off of. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Anything that I get reclaimed, I come up with a strategy. I'm gonna to take to my buy, sell, trade store here in town and see if they will take any of the items, get store credit and purchase items there that are higher end that I normally wouldn't buy. That's my strategy, that's my plan. Stop sourcing for thread up and moving right along. Yesterday, I took some half, about a half a day, time out of my day to do some self-care. I did a you know facial treatment. I just took some time, I backed away from the computer and I only responded to offers, that was it. I just took a breather. Um, part of my job as a sociologist is that I do crisis counseling. So I had to crisis counsel myself and say, girl, chill out, <laughs> it's not a big deal. Let them go on and thread up and do what they want. Yes, it was rude. Yes, it lacked responsibility. It's no reflection on me, it's no reflection on anybody, but just let it go, let them carry on. And I'm in it, we're going to part ways. We're going to break up amicably and be nice about it and go our separate ways. <laughs> so that's where I'm at, guys. Um, thanks for listening. I'd love to hear feedback about your expansion thread up or any questions you may have. Um, and I just hope that your week is fantastic. I hope you're not getting this horrible snowstorm that we are getting, but I hope your weather is great and be safe out there. Be healthy. Take time out for yourself and we'll chat next time. Bye.